Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to go over a rather strange circuit that I came across on the internet the other day called an NPN relaxation oscillator. Now, there are a couple of things that make this one of the more interesting circuits that I've seen. First off, that it's one of the simplest and lowest component count oscill uh, A-stable oscillators that I've ever encountered. Using just three core components and one LED for actually seeing the output of it, we can create a stable or relatively stable RC time constant output uh, using basically just what's on this breadboard here. Let me show you how this oscillator works. The way it works is it starts as a simple RC circuit, a resistor connected to a capacitor. The capacitor is grounded, or connected to negative rather, and the resistor is connected to, say, plus 12 volts. It has to be fairly high, above around 8 volts, and I'll tell you why later. Now in this configuration, this would simply be a monostable timer. It would charge up to a, a maximum and then it would just stay at this charge level. But here's where the magic sauce comes in. A, a separate line is run off to a bipolar junction transistor, specifically an NPN, and it's connected in reverse polarity. That's right. It's actually connected like this. The base is left floating and then the collector is connected to an LED or other output device, which is then part of the completed circuit. The crazy thing about how this circuit works is when the capacitor charges up, it actually reaches the dielectric breakdown voltage of the reverse biased NPN, which is usually quite low, around six volts. And one of the strange properties specific to an NPN transistor with its base floating in reverse bias is that unlike a Zener diode, which would break down and maintain a continuous voltage, once this breaks down and, uh, dielectrically, it will continue to conduct current until the voltage comes all the way down to a minimum, at which point it'll clamp back off again. And this makes it an extremely useful nonlinear device for operating a relaxation oscillator. The capacitor's voltage is gradually charged via the resistor until it finally reaches the combined forward voltage drop of the LED and breakdown voltage of the BJT. At this point, the BJT begins to conduct. It dumps the entire contents of the capacitor through the LED, and then when it, the voltage of the capacitor comes down, it then clamps back off and starts charging again gradually. Now, as awesome as this circuit seems, it seems like you're sort of hacking an non-ideal phenomenon in the BJT, it's really not a particularly elegant circuit in terms of actual component operating conditions. The main reason for that is when the BJT goes into breakdown, the entire contents of the capacitor, the charge on the capacitor, is dumped extremely rapidly through both the transistor and the diode. Now on the video, it may be hard to see, but you'll see that this LED is pulsing every once in a while, but it's pulsing so incredibly briefly that you may not even see it on the camera. In fact, right now, it looks like you guys can't see it on the camera. Let me focus on a darker area of the image, and that should bring up the exposure time so you can just barely see it flashing. The reason that it's so incredibly brief is exactly that. It's just discharging the capacitor all at once through the LED, most likely subjecting the LED to probably a few hundred milliamps of current per pulse. Now granted, this is an incredibly, incredibly short duty cycle. It's basically almost invisible uh, to the camera. However, to the naked eye, this flashes extremely brightly. Like, if you look into the end of it, it'll actually you'll see a spot for a few seconds. It's that bright. So it really is an effective circuit for generating very bright pulses of light. The other thing that makes it really cool, besides its small... Uh, its small component count, though, is its incredibly low power consumption for the amount of light it produces. I'm using in this configuration a 33K, 33K resistor and a 220 microfarad capacitor. Now, 12 volts, this 33K resistor is basically uh, limiting the current through the entire circuit to around 330 microamps which is such an incredibly small amount of current that this entire circuit could probably operate on a typical car battery for about 14 years, according to my calculations. That makes this an ideal circuit for such things as flashing security lights that you might put inside a car under the dashboard to simulate a car security system. It's, it's compact, it flashes very brightly and at regular intervals, and it basically consumes no, uh, no negli or basically negligible power. 
So ultimately, this is a brilliant circuit for that type of application. Provided the LED you choose and the transistor you choose are robust enough to withstand those massive avalanches of current, then it should last a very long time and it should be able to operate in, a, in an A-stable state for uh, many, many years on a sm relatively small battery system. So the NPN relaxation oscillator, one of the strangest, weirdest circuits I've come across and probably one of the cooler circuits I've ever come across. There it is, and this is basically how it works. So hopefully you enjoyed this brief video on a simple but really interesting circuit, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.